for the past couple of days, we have been hearing a lot about, or in this past presentations, a lot about assignments and workflow, and um, how does that all come together. Uh, with our little session today, uh, we are going to expand on that subject. Um, how, what are assignments? Uh, how do they work uh, in a hospital environment? How do they work in Canaxol? How can we help to mitigate some of the pains that uh, caregivers have uh, at the beginning of the shift, uh, assigning themselves to a patient or to a room? So, first we're going to start with uh, alarm escalation path and how assignments fit into that. Um, when there is an alert or an event that is triggered at a bedside, uh, it first goes to, or immediately, to what we call the primary caregiver. Uh, if for some reason the primary caregiver uh, does not have the, uh, a chance to attend to the patient or is busy on the phone or is in an area with no coverage, uh, the system should automatically, after a predetermined amount of time, um, escalate that notification to a secondary caregiver. Um, if uh, the, the caregiver knows in advance that they will not be able to attend, they can actually also manually escalate. So this could save precious seconds uh, in the delivery of the messages. Uh, in the secondary level, the process would repeat itself. So the user could have the possibility to manually escalate or again, after that predetermined amount of time, it can escalate to what we call the backup level. The timings between levels are independent. So if I have 60 seconds of, uh, of time uh, between the primary and secondary, I could have 30 seconds between the secondary and the backup, or five minutes or 10, um, whatever time um, you as the user decides on. So uh, what is an assignment and how does it fit in uh, into that process, into that workflow process? Uh, an assignment is not that type of an assignment. Uh, it's not just spitting out information to whoever uh, is supposed to receive. Uh, there is a process uh, that needs to occur. It needs to be decided who will receive what. Um, if that person or group of persons is not able to receive the notification and attend to the patient, um, how is that alert being routed? Um, is it going to the secondary caregiver? Is it going to the nurse manager, to the response team? Uh, those are decisions that need to occur beforehand and not on the spot. Uh, the assignment themselves um, ought to be done at the beginning of the shift. So if uh, the, the nurse comes in in the morning, she would pick up a phone, uh, go, to the, go to the computer at the nurse's station and assign herself. Uh, alternatively, and we'll, we'll cover this ahead, uh, the unit clerk could perform that task. So how do we have, or how do we see assignments in a hospital environment? Canaxel is not the only system that performs assignments. Uh, we have nurse call systems, device systems, EMRs, and patient monitoring systems. Uh, all of them have their own assignment engines, they have their own capabilities of sending notifications to end user devices. Uh, if we, on top of that, simply add Canaxol, it would be another engine for an end user to perform the assignment. So what would be the shortcomings of this? And how could this be frustrating for the end user? They, when they come in in the morning, they would have to repeat the same task in every different uh, system. So I'm a nurse, I would go in, I would assign myself in the nurse call system, and then I would have to repeat that process for the patient monitoring system, because at the end of the day, they do not talk amongst themselves. On top of that, uh, how does reporting work? If I need to pull a report on a particular incident that happened in my unit, uh, what do I have to do? I would have to go to the nurse call system, pull a report, 
but the data on that report only covers the information inside the nurse call system. I would then have to go to the device system, to the phone system that I'll be using at the hospital, and pull a report on that. Compare the two reports, and then do my investigation. How can Connectfall help mitigate that? With Connectfall, we can reduce the number of duplicate assignments. Uh, with a simple drag and drop process, uh, we can assign nurse call, patient monitor, EMR, all of those events could be assigned with a simple step. Uh, besides that, that translates into having all of the uh, reports centralized. So you have end-to-end -end reporting. You can have all of the information that starts at the bedside all the way until the nurse manager or the nurse practitioner acknowledged or escalated that same notification. Right. Now, what type of different assignments do we have in Connexel? Um, how does it look? How does it work? Um, we are going to cover uh, two types of assignments out of the 13 or 14 types. Um, the first one would be what we call a um, direct assignment, a uh, alarm to device assignment. Uh, it's a type of assignment that many of you used over the years and uh, it's a simple process of dragging an alarm to a phone. So how it will work is a nurse would come in in the morning, pick up a phone, see what extension she, she has, select her room, the number of alarms, and drag them to the primary, secondary, or backup level of that phone. So how does it look in Connexel? So let me give you a quick demonstration here. Here. Okay, so this would be something that a nurse would see at the beginning of the shift. I have my pod uh, A, B, and C on the top there, and I have my uh, devices for the units. Um, what do I do? Let's say that I currently have phone with extension 1003, so I highlight my phone. And then let's say that I want to be the primary caregiver for pod A. I click and hold and I drag my, uh, my room to the primary level of my device. Um, if I want to be the secondary caregiver for pods B and C, in case the primary for those pods is not available, I can do that as well. So I just select both of them and drag them to my secondary level. I click save, and from that moment on, all of the alerts from pod A are um, assigned to extension 1003. Okay, and this includes nurse call, EMR, patient monitoring. I've done all of that with one drag and drop movement. Alternatively, if I want to be more granular, if, let's say, I only want to receive a specific alarm from a specific bed, I can also do that. I can drill in to the specific alarm that I want. So I'm going to use an example from uh, pediatric bed C. And here I have the individual alarms for that specific bed. So it's just not dragging the entire number of alarms from that bed, but, all, but um, assigning specific alerts. So let me select another phone here, and let's say that I want to receive only the staff assist for that particular bed. And let me drag this out here. And for pod B, oh, sorry. And for pod B here, I want to receive the ventilator alert on a secondary level. So that is very specific to the type of alarms that I have in each particular bed. Okay? So going back to the alert to assignments in general, uh, this is only one of the options that we have. Uh, besides that, we have uh, what we call role-based assignments. So uh, what are role-based assignments and how do they work? 
with role based assignments, we add another layer on top of those direct assignments. They're still used within Canafa, but they're in the background. The end user does not have, does not see them, does not work with that particular screen that we just saw. Um, how would it work? Uh, we assign roles to the users. I, as a nurse, come in and I assign myself as the primary caregiver for a specific room or group of rooms. With that, because of all the work that is done in the background, I can, um, or automatically, those alerts come to my particular device. Based on that, I can sign in, sign out. Uh, all of my uh, sign-in information can be pulled from the, um, from the domain, from the uh, uh, active directory of the network, so everything is interconnected. Uh, how does that look in Canaxol? How do we do it? So it's also quite a simple process. It, it repeats the, almost the, uh, the same steps. So this is what they would see. We have our list of users at the bottom. Here, I have my, my user, Roberto. I actually have the same shirt that I have here. I did it on purpose. Uh, and I have my list of roles here on the top. So here I have selected room 2101. And I can assign myself to be the primary caregiver for that specific room. So uh, I would just make sure that I have my uh, user highlighted here at the bottom and I go to the top, primary caregiver, and drag it. Okay, so it's that simple. Uh, again, with this, I've automatically assigned the, the predetermined number of alarms for that specific pad to my user. All of that work is done in the implementation phase of the project, where we sit down with the customer and we help them decide what are the roles and what type of alerts they are responsible for. Okay? Uh, based on this, we can, we, can build. we can build on this. I could say that I only want to be responsible for this particular bed or patient from 9 to 5, for example. So how would I do that? I would select my, uh, my role, my particular assignment, I could go to set range, and here I can define a specific shift. So let's just say that you know, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's when I ought to be in charge of that patient. Click save, and here I have that particular assignment is only valid until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It is completely independent from any other assignment that I make. So let's say that Roberto is going to be the secondary caregiver for room 2102. If I assign this, now those two assignments are completely independent. Room 2101 or bed 2101 will only be valid from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. while 2102 will be valid all day. Okay? So, this assignment that we've done uh, consists of assigning myself as a user to a room or to the patient in that room. How do I get the notification on my phone? Where do I define which phone I'm using? Because I might not walk around with the same phone every day. How do I do that in Connectful or in this particular process? I can, there are a couple of different ways. I can right click on my user and select Easy Edit User Device Assignment. Now with that, I have a list, and here on the left side, I have only the phones that refer to the unit I work on. So because I'm a nurse in the PQ, I only have phones from the PQ. And when I got in this morning, I happened to pick up extension 2003. Okay, so now we've come full circle. I, as a user, assigned myself to a particular bed or a particular room and I have assigned a phone to myself. I can have multiple phones. I can have a phone and an email account just so that 
uh, in the case of uh, I'm out of range from the Wi-Fi, I could still have receive an email on my personal phone with any event from that room or whatever event we decide to, to do the assignment on. Okay? So with all of this in mind, there are a couple of things that we need to consider when Connexal Professional Services goes into a, uh, a customer site and helps the customer decide on what type of assignments they, they ought to use. Uh, one of those things is, does the user have a permanent device? How does it work? Do I always carry around the same phone? And if, if yes, then will someone else, when I'm not working, will someone else use it? And do I always work in the same unit? How does that work? Am I a floater? So could it be that in the morning I work in the PICU, but in the afternoon I work in the ED? If that is the case, will my phone accompany me between units? So all of that are things that we need to have into account. Um, who will be doing the assignment? Will it be the nurse when he or she comes in, pick up a phone and do the assignment on the computer? Or would it be the unit clerk? We've had different experiences with different customers. While some decide or feel more comfortable having the nurses themselves do their, do their own assignments, while others prefer to be the unit clerk at the beginning of the shift, select the phones, hand them out to the nurses, and do the assignments on the computer. So the nurses do not have to worry about assignments. They just pick up the phone that the unit clerk gives them, and they're on their way. Uh, another important aspect is the ease of use versus flexibility. Um, sometimes they do not go hand in hand. Uh, we need to help the customer decide if they, uh, they want something that is very flexible for the nurses or for the staff to change on the fly or if they want the nurses to simply not think about assignments. So in this particular case, something has a static assignment could be what we want. And a, stat a static assignment being an assignment that is always the same for that specific phone. A nurse would come in and they would know that the phone with extension 1001 is always responsible for rooms one, two, and three. So I myself as a nurse do not even need to go into Canaxol, I just pick up a phone and I know that I'm responsible for those rooms. Okay, so uh, all of this is conversations that we have with the end user, with the customer, to help them decide what is the best way. Like I said, there are 13, 14 ways of doing assignments. We would be here all morning uh, discussing that. I don't have the voice to do that, so we'll just go with two types of assignments. Those are the most commonly used ones, the ones that we see that most co uh, customers feel comfortable with. And uh, even for the end users, the unit clerks especially, role-based assignments is something that it speaks to them because they know it's not just um, a phone and a room number. They know the people that are working, they know what rooms they're assigned to, they just drag them. So uh, all of this was something that we, we thought about very hard to make it easier and uh, simple for a person that speaks the healthcare language to understand. Okay. Um, any questions? Yes. Biometric reports. Biometric record. Can you the questions so that everybody knows? Yes, yes. So, can we pull reports based on biometric records? Is that it? Role based assignments. So, the end user would come in, log in with the fingerprint, yeah, and then do the assignment. Yeah, it is possible because we could we pull the login logout. Do you know the login? Yeah. So.
those are actually in stocking and available. So there are different status. One is you log out for days, they are not available. No matter what you sign to do, not But for the uh, biometrics, this can, the thicker skin can tell you automatically log you in and make you available. You probably still will do the assignment, but just make your status change. Mm, yeah. So that login information is something that could be done here in Connexol. So right now I'm logged in and I can log myself out. Can we do this login? We can pull this login information from the domain, from the Active Directory. If the biometric interface. Yep. Yes, we did. We have done that in Connexol, um, and who's, who's been in our office maybe seen it. Uh, when we walk in, uh, we have a, a fingerprint scanner. Every day when we get into the office, we basically log ourselves in. Yeah, so then with that, obviously, well, I shouldn't we say obviously, but I don't have, I don't assign anything to myself in the office. That's just to know, for people to know. Exactly, exactly. I'm logged in, I'm in the system, I can assign alerts to myself. Assignments could be pre-made, or we can pull the assignments from a third-party system. Connexel has a particular client that is called the UEC, User Exchange Client. This client uh, gives us the possibility to import assignments and also to export assignments. So we do have the capability to ping a third-party system and have them tell us what assignments are supposed to be done for what users. Okay. things can happen. Um, obviously that is something that we want to avoid. Um, if by default no one is assigned to a room, the alarm just sits in connects hall. It's obviously still alarming in the nurse call system or at the bedside in the patient monitor, but it's not ringing on any phones. Um, connects hall does have a feature called um, define or predefined assignments or default assignments where it sees that if those three levels of escalation are empty, or if there's no role assigned to a specific bed, it notifies someone. It triggers something. It couldn't be an email to the charge nurse or a notification to the charge nurse, so that they know, hey, this alarm went off in this bed, but there is no one assigned. Role-based assignments came out in version 5. Uh, version 6 built on that, uh, but many of the features that I talked about here are still available in version 5. Um, Reporting-wise, and I, I did mention uh, the, the centralized reporting capabilities, and there is another presentation happening today about reporting. Um, Reporting-wise, we've taken great steps in version 6, especially with web-based reporting and um, that is obviously connected to the assignments.
but we read it that it's actually the, the tape that's not in the end, so that you don't have to use it yourself to manually do this. Whatever feels comfortable for the uh, hospital, or how you foresee where you have the bubbles.